Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Before his ascension, Jesus left this clear message, spread the gospel, so that's been our mission. In this time, in this season, it seems tough to abide. Alone in our homes or masked in our streets, we struggle to share with those that we meet. And though we may shout from the tops of our voice, it seems only our echoes that hear us rejoice. Our churches were shut, but our hearts remain open, and slowly, yet surely, the silence is broken. We know what it is to fight an enemy unseen. We've battled him daily and nightly indeed. We are not scared, not injured, not broken or beaten. Purchased with blood, we are never defeated. This message for all has only one theme. You were bought at a price and you are redeemed. Can you feel the sun rising? Can you hear the bells ringing? The children of God will stand once again. We have stayed in place to protect those outside. But brothers, my sisters, again we will rise. Can you hear the drums beating? Can you hear the chorus singing? Can you hear them in the distance? God's army is marching. It's time to stand up. It's time to fall in line. Hear the drums. Hear the horns. Hear glory divine. I'm Lee from the Young Adult Cell Group, led by Brother Jayet. Hi Church, I'm Bernard, and I'm from uh, the YSCG, led by uh, Brother Jayet. Um, I actually involve myself uh, quite a lot in church, uh, from the worship ministry, as well as the uh, Ashes team, uh, as well as involving myself in PPKJV. Support PPKJV! Hi, my name is David. Uh, I was formerly from Kuala Lumpur, and now live in JB since 2015. The communities that I've been involved in are uh, worship and for a time with JC Radix and now I'm currently um, helping Jai with the cell. Church of Praise has really been home for me and uh, yeah, I love everyone in it, you know, everyone's great. One thing that I enjoy about online service is that uh, every single week, pastor's sermons are always so relevant towards uh, in our lives that you always talk about things that will encourage us and that will support us, that can bring us through the week. An online service is a great way to, to you know, be at home. You know, social distancing is fun! <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I really really do miss the human interaction that comes along with uh, being in church. Even though you know, I have the convenience of home watching you know, online church, I actually still do miss attending church itself. You know, I miss everyone a lot. I think throughout this whole, you know, three months of uh, MCO, you know, I've really missed social interaction. One thing I miss about being in church is the fellowship, the people. Uh, I miss going out for a dinner after church and just being around them, especially my young adults. I really miss all the fellowship with church members, talking to everyone, shaking their hands, giving everyone hugs, or uh, especially going out makan with all our CG members, you know. For, for, uh, after church services. And I miss eating together with cell members. Yeah, and uh, you know, I hope that during this whole CEO period, you know, everyone will be encouraged you know, by their CG, online CG sessions as well as uh, uh, online church. One thing I learned throughout this whole period, this MCO period, is that God is always in control. And no matter what, we just have to trust in Him and everything will turn out fine in the end. I really hope that uh, we can get together soon. You know, see you back at church and uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. Shalom and good morning everyone. Welcome to our online service once again. We greatly rejoice that God's Spirit is indeed 
powerfully working in your life and you are just as excited about Jesus as before, if not even more, in spite of this COVID-19 pandemic. By the way, I have great news for you, especially those of you from Church of Praise. Praise the Lord! We have reached our target for our first online missions pledge this year. And for those not from Church of Praise, the missions pledge is an annual church event where church members are given the opportunity to pledge an amount for missions work for that particular year. And I want to take this opportunity to personally thank all of you who have pledged your generosity, your support, your vision are indeed a great encouragement to us and serve as a testimony of God at work in your life. May God provide you to the overflowing as you sow into His kingdom. And yes, many all over the world, especially the poorer nations, are going to be blessed by the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ through your giving. Uh, having said this, some of you may still want to give to the missions work here. So please feel free to contribute as the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And even though the pledge amount has been reached, we'll do more if and when we receive more. Alright, let's now prepare our hearts to worship the Lord Jesus together and to receive His Word prepared for us today. We are surely going to be blessed. Hey Church, welcome to Church Online and we're so happy to see all of you. We hope that you've had a great week and let's come together and praise God. Amen. Are you ready? Let's go! Put your hands together. Oh, 
shout in your best praise. Amen. Hallelujah.
family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children
Oh Lord, we cannot do life without you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. us, oh Lord. We want to reach out like that woman who wants to hold the hem of your clothing, oh Lord. We want to reach out with faith, knowing we will receive from you, oh Lord. We know we will receive. We will receive right now. Right now, where will we are, Lord? We will receive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, power. Power will flow. Pastor for the earlier update on missions giving and Sister Melissa for a wonderful time of worship. Thank you Church for your faithful giving which allows the Church to serve the community in this uniquely distressing time. If you are new, please don't feel obligated to give. This is really for Church members who understand that giving to the Lord is important. Let us pray for tithes and offerings. The Lord bless every cheerful giver. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Bless the tithes and offering in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church has organized Bible study with Brother David Lee and titled The Hope of the Gospel Beyond Waiting for the End from the book of Matthew. Bible study will take place for four consecutive weeks in July on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. via Zoom. Closing date for registration is today. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for the earlier update on missions giving. May I encourage you to participate in our missions pledge. 
as God speaks to your heart for the extension of His kingdom. Our cell members faithfully meet online to discuss our weekly sermon and catch up. If you are without a cell, we encourage you to be part of one. Please visit www.churchofpraise.org.my slash cellgroups to pick up one that suits you. Church, we have corporate prayer coming up again next weekend. We have been very encouraged by the attendance so far, but you should definitely join us too. Yes, I'm referring to you. Prayer meetings take place every first and third Saturday morning of the month at 7.30 a.m. Please join us as we intercede for the COVID-19 situation that is upon us. Matters of the Church, Johor Bahru and Malaysia as a whole. I guarantee that your spirit will be refreshed at the end of our prayer session. If you have a prayer request, let us pray with you. Recap on last week's sermon. We were blessed with Pastor James Tan's sermon titled Celebrating Dads. And he shared three main points. First, it is tough to be a dad. Second, forgive your dad. Third, enjoy your dad. For those who misses the previous services, you may visit our online platforms. This week, we have our guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Simon Cheong. His sermon entitled, Making Room for God's Promises. Today, I want to share with you about making room for God's promises. Make room for God's promises. As businesses are reopened, people are back to their workplace, and now different churches in the green zone are preparing to welcome their members back to the churches. There is much talk and concern about how it will all turn out to be. Some are very excited, others are apprehensive, but most are likely to just wait and see. Well, it is a normal human response. It's valid and it's needed to ensure public health safety, economic growth and sustainability. And we pray as God's people for a recovery phase that is free from unnecessary encumbrance. But what about God's restoration plan? What about God's promises to His people? The spiritual aspect in this recovery phase is not just the physical aspect. But I believe for the past two months, many of you have been strengthened even though you were away. Even though we were scattered and separated from each other, but God is still there in our homes, in our lives. And we see growth in prayer, growth in worship, growth in God's Word. And I think God is also preparing His people for something even greater spiritually. But our response is pivotal. Let's look today in an Old Testament passage in Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 3. God's promise to the nation of Israel at that point of time and God's desired response from His people that that promise may come to pass. Even as we listen, as we watch, and we hear God's word today, let us open our hearts and allow God to take this passage, even though it is for the nation of Israel then, there is still application for the church, for you and for me today. Follow with me as I read from the NASB version, Isaiah 54 verses 1 to 3. The prophet Isaiah declared, Shout for joy, O barren one, 
you who have borne no child, break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you who have not travailed, for the sons of the desolate will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out the curtains of your dwellings, spare not, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your pecks. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess the nations and will resettle the desolate cities. May God bless the preaching, the hearing, and the doing of His Word to us today. The prophet Isaiah declares to the people at this point of time God's promise of restoration. There are four moments of Israel's history. If you study the Old Testament the history of the nation of Israel, it can be summed up or categorized into four different moments. First, the birth of a nation through Abraham. Second, the marriage of a nation at Mount Sinai, the giving of the law or the constitution to the nation. Third, the death of a nation because of sin and disobedience, referring to the Assyrian and the Babylonian captivity. And then fourth, the restoration of a nation, returning back from exile to re-establish and for expansion. Isaiah 54 verses 1 to 3 fits into the fourth moment of the nation of Israel. It is the moment of their deliverance from captivity. Today, I want to approach the preaching of God's Word in two parts. First, application to the nation of Israel, and then second, application to the church and to us today. We need to make room for God's promise. How do we make room for God's promise? In Isaiah 54 verses 1 to 3, these three verses outline to us God's desired response from His people. The first promise in verse 1 explains to us the promise of growth. Of course, you can apply it to biological growth because it says there, shout for joy. That word there is get excited, be enthusiastic. Something great is going to take place. Something new is going to take place and there's going to be growth. He says, oh barren one, using the metaphor of a barren woman, unable to have a child and in comparison to a married person. And you're going to have, not only have child, but you're going to have numerous children. Verse 1 talks about the promise of biological growth, the promise of numerical growth. It can be applied as promise in financial growth. Promise of growth. Growth refers to success. Growth refers to what we seek for. Grow in our spiritual life. Grow in strength. Grow in power the promise of growth. But it's not just the promise of growth. The key point that is mentioned there in verse 1 is Isaiah is soliciting a response from God's people. Is that get excited. Get excited because growth is coming. Are you excited or are you disappointed? Are you apprehensive about God's promises? Of course, there are many things we can talk about in terms of the natural. But I'm speaking today about God's promise. What is your response towards God's Word? What is your response to the promises that is stated in God's Word? That God will provide. That God answers prayer. That God says, especially in the New Testament, that Christ is coming back again. Is there that excitement? Is there that faith response? Is there that positive response? Verse 2 talks about a second desired response. The second desired response is get to work. Get to work. The first one is get excited. Then get to work. It says there, let me read again in verse 2. 
It says there, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out the curtains of your dwellings, spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your packs. There are four verbs there. And all the four verbs, if you put it all together, it is action referring to increase in capacity, talking about do something, enlarge, stretch, lengthen, strengthen. All this is part and parcel of our work. God's promise is not just a hard response of excitement, but there should be action. It's more than words, it's action and action. And now that we are allowed to get back to our premises, to worship God, there's a lot of work to be done. The pastor and the team cannot do it alone. And we can all come together and see how these things can be done. I do not know whether you're going to get back, but I'm saying that if there is this opportunity to serve, get to work. And it's not just about work, it is about increased capacity. It's a promise. All these terms symbolize prepare for growth. Prepare, get to work, prepare. Now I know if we look at the natural circumstances, everything seems to be doom and gloom. But as God's people, we can tap in, in faith, to know that God will provide for His children. And His children, His church, have gone through many crises through history, world history. The church is still standing. God's people, from generation to generation, is still standing. As, as Jesus said to Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He is the builder, and He will build your lives. He will build your business. He will build your family. And His promise of victory is a promise of victory. Verse 3 talks about the third component of this promise. It's not just a promise of biological growth or numerical growth. It's not just a promise of increased capacity, but it's also a promise of expansion beyond, expansion beyond. Notice the word says, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, talking about global, and your descendants will possess the nations, not singular nations, and will resettle the desolate cities. He's speaking about Israel's future, Israel's future of expansion and influence abroad. So I would say here in this part, he says, get ready for more. Get ready for greater things. Get ready for exciting things. For Israel, it meant biological growth. For Israel, it meant increased capacity. For Israel, this promise of restoration means resettlement, expansion. Get excited. Get to work. Get ready. So for Israel, the prophet Isaiah says, make room by being passionate, have a plan, get to work, prepare to move on. You're not going to be staying in Babylon anymore. Time is come that you will return home. The second part of this sermon focuses on the application. So how does it apply to the church today? Because this promise is given to the nation of Israel. It's not to us, but the spiritual applications that I've shared can be applied to us today. But in terms of God's promise to the church today and to us today, it is a promise, not a return to the promised land, but a ret the return of Christ. The return of Christ, that's one promise, the biblical prophecy that God says, Jesus will come back again one day. And during this return, and before this return, there will be a great gathering of harvest, the end time harvest. And there is also the preparing of the bride. So there are three things. He's coming back and he is wanting to reach out and bring all people back to him. And thirdly, he wants his bride, his people to be pure and holy. So in terms of these three aspects, we need to get excited. In fact, in that same book, in the same prophecy in Isaiah 56 verse 7, the Bible says, 
as Isaiah declared, my house shall become a house of prayer for all nations. And Jesus echoed that in Mark chapter 11, verse 17. And he says, isn't my house a house of prayer for all nations? It's not a closed group. It is an open group. It's for all people. And he says there, Jesus added the extra verse, his extra word there, he says, and have you turned it into a den of thieves? God's promise to the church today is for us to grow spiritually. God's promise to us today is for us to reach out. And God's promise to us today is to look up for His return. What's the application for us today? I will share with you three applications. Number one, for the church as a community, whether it's universal or local, get excited, live out loud our destiny as the church. As I mentioned, Matthew 16, 18, we are a victorious church. Live out that DNA because Jesus builds the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A winning church. Secondly, in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, live out loud as salt and light in this world. Be an influence, not be influenced. Romans 12 says, do not be conformed, but be transformed. We are called to be transformers. But first, we need to be transformed from the inside out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe during these two months that we are locked down in a home, many of you have experienced inner transformation. Inner transformation. Keep close to God. Pray, seek His word. Live out loud in Isaiah 66 verse 19 as a sign, a signpost. When people look at us, they see that we are the true disciples of Jesus Christ. Point people to the right way, for many are lost and seeking direction. First Peter 2.9 says, get excited, live out loud as a holy nation, not just washing our hands, but daily confessing before God, clean, make sure that our lives are clean before God. Get rid of sin, get our house in order, get rid of idols, as faith community. Get excited about God's promise. Get excited about Jesus' return. Get excited about the end time harvest. Get excited about our spiritual life, our life with God. Prepare as a bride of Christ that we are ready for His return. The second application that we can make is get to work as a church. Missions beyond borders, borderless mission that we can do, continue to give the traditional model of missions. Pray, give, go. Pray, give, go. We can still pray. Keep on praying. Join the prayer groups. Intercede for nations around the world that has been affected by this pandemic. Intercede for their hearts. Intercede that eyes may be open, ears may be open. Intercede for receptivity, intercede for so many things. Then give. We can still give online. Give towards mission. I heard that you all have fulfilled the pledge and I praise God for that. Thank God for a giving community. Just like the Corinthian church. Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians and in 1 Corinthians 16, 2 Corinthians 8 during a time of famine in Jerusalem and the people gave even during a time of difficulties just like you did and may God bless you manifold in return as you sow towards the work of missions but going is challenging today because of the pandemic but we pray that the borders will be open again that we can still go but other than that 
there is this whole platform online where we can explore and do greater things for God. Going places, reaching people, starting churches. That's the application we have today. And the third and the last one is get ready. So for the children of Israel, get excited. There's going to be growth. For the church and for you and I today, get excited about Jesus coming. Get excited. For the children of Israel, you know, they need to get to work. Prepare for expansion. Get to work. Extend. Expand. Stretch. For us, similarly, we need to get to work. Extend our faith. Extend our mindset. Pushing the parameters. See beyond the natural and believe that God can do way beyond as we trust God. Trust God for breakthroughs in your business. Trust God for your employment. Trust God for your family. Trust God for your spiritual breakthroughs. The Church of Jesus Christ will march on through these difficult times. And the third one is get ready because they are not going to be in Babylon. They're going to move back, return to Israel. Similarly, the church today and individually, we know that the world we live in we are pilgrims passing through. We'll move on. Just as we move on from the different phases of recovery during this pandemic. Move on. But don't miss out the lessons learned from the past. Don't repeat the same mistakes done. Continue to do the good things that is practices that is helpful for our health and also the things we learn during the two months in our spiritual life learning to pray together, no pastor to visit us, no one to talk to, and leading the family and worshipping online, and so many things that we have learned and acquired. Don't throw it all away. Keep it. Carry on. Though now, because we are getting back in church, we go back to the same old mold. Everything depends on the shepherd. Feed yourself. Read God's Word. Intercede. Pray. Those things that God has bring in during these two months. Let's keep doing it. And as individuals, get ready. Get ready for Christ's return. Prepare. Keep pure. First John chapter 3, verse 3 says, Keep your lives pure. Matthew 25, 4 and Jude talks about build up yourself. Keep filled with the Holy Spirit. Keep praying in the Holy Spirit. First Peter 4, 7, keep sober and praying always. Sober in your mind. Vigilant. Luke 19, 13 says, Keep busy serving God. Keep busy for God. Acts 1, 8. Keep busy for God. Serving God. Hebrews 9, 28. Keep looking up the author and finisher of our faith. And James 5, 8 says, Be patient. Keep patience. For He is coming back again. As we conclude in this time, the short time we have together, Church, I pray that we will not miss out on God's promise. Make room for God's promises in our life. There are many of them, but I've highlighted to you today a key promise for the nation of Israel. God's promise to the church that He is coming back and there's going to be an end time harvest. And God's promise to preserve His people, the bride of Christ, that when He returns, they will all come to a beautiful consummation and end, ending well. And let me close by saying those three things again. God's promise gives us strength to know that God who promises will bring it to pass. God's promise gives us strength for today and also inspire hope for the future. So get excited with God's promise. Be passionate about God's word, about God's promises. Get to work on God's promises. Philippians 4, 6 says, in everything by prayer and supplication. That's our part. And then he says, he will answer our prayer. Have a plan. Have a plan to grow. Still planned. And surrender and commit in Proverbs, our plans to God. 
get ready for God's expansion plan. Prepare to move on in our lives. Move on in our lives. Move on in our spiritual life. Move on in faith. For our life and our spiritual walk is a journey, a continuous journey until He returns. Let me close by just telling you and encouraging you, do not grow weary in worship, in your daily walk with God and in purposeful work for God. Allow me to pray for you as we close. Father, I thank you. Thank you for your people. Thank you for these people of praise, for these people empowered to love you, to serve you. Now I pray that these people will be a people who will be passionate about your promises. Men, institutions and the world may fail us, but you will never fail us. I pray today that you will touch the hearts of every single person who is watching and hearing this message, that they can always look to you, look to your promises, for your promises are yea and amen. For you will provide, you will heal, you will look into their well-being. But most of all, help us in this time and age to get excited about your return. Get excited about what you're going to do in the days ahead. And as we partner with you, we will see greater things. I bless your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. We have come to the end of our service. Thanks for joining and comment if you have been touched by the message. Comment at the comment section and contact us with all your prayer requests. Let us bless you with a scripture from Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you shalom peace. Amen. See you next weekend.